The most important scientific publication of our lifetimes may have just been published. It seems likely that we now have all the pieces that we need in order to understand abiogenesis. That is, how life started on our planet. Our Earth is 4.6 billion years old, and life popped up somewhere in the ballpark of 3.5 billion years. That means the conditions in which life formed on this planet are very different than they are today, and they're shaped by the organisms that we collected along the way. The building blocks to life on Earth are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus. Usable nitrogen and oxygen were in short supply on early Earth. However, nitrogen can be fixed into a usable form by lightning, and early Earth had a lot of volcanic activity, which helped support it. We wouldn't see complex life on Earth till things like algae and plants evolved and caused the great oxygenation event. Along with them, we got my favorite critters, the rhizobia, which are able to fix nitrogen, which is the limiting factor for all life on Earth. More recently, the presence of dark oxygen may answer other questions about how early life managed to get the oxygen it needed to form. That is, oxygen, while did exist on early Earth, we now know that there are other ways that oxygen can come about in the absence of light. It was roughly 70 years ago that a 22-year-old scientist created the conditions that were needed in order to form organic molecules abiotically. This was such an important discovery that it is still relevant today. It was long believed that life had formed on the bottom of the ocean in hydrothermal vents. However, more recent research has found that you can form things like nucleotides and amino acids and organic molecules in the presence of UV light. Rainwater may have played a role as well. One of the big questions was how could we form phosphate? Our cells use phosphate in order to perform cellular processes. We break them and put them together, and our DNA is linked by them. But it's very energetically costly to put phosphate on. But we found the conditions in which you need to pop phosphate onto a nucleotide or onto a lipid, and that's the most important part. Given that we know how nucleobases, like the ones that form DNA, can form, they all on their own can function in a self-replicating manner. They can force others into confirmation. The biggest question is how do we get all these pieces together? And that's exactly what this research group found, how to put all of these pieces together and form them at the same time. It turns out what they were missing was silica. Silicon makes up 28% of our planet, but we thought it's mostly useless. We don't use it in biological processes, it's inert. That's what early scientists were missing, silica. They used a silica container in order to perform these processes, and it worked. They created protocells. This is what formed when you toss all those things together. This is very likely what your ancestors looked like. This is what existed on our planet before anything else, and very likely exists on other planets now. The next steps are going to be assembling it into artificial life, which is not that hard because we've already done it. You're looking at Mycoplasma labradorium, the first synthetic organism that was designed and created and breathed life into. Also just the first of many. Scientists are working on creating artificial genomes for things like yeast, eukaryotes, more complex life. Are you